When discussing a legendary individual with the utmost integrity, a remarkable and little-known figure comes to mind. This retired four-star army general had a distinguished military career before being sworn in as the 2080th Secretary of Defense in the United States. His journey began with his graduation from West Point, the U.S. Military Academy in upstate New York, and spanned a remarkable 41 years of service to the nation. Although he achieved the historic milestone of becoming the first black Secretary of Defense, his career was marked by numerous groundbreaking challenges and achievements. However, who is this man? How has he been able to attain this greatness? Join us as we uncover the, the first black Secretary of Defense in America, General Lloyd J. Austin. Lloyd J. Austin's Early Life and Education. Austin was born on August 8, 1953, in Mobile, Alabama, and grew up in Thomasville, Georgia. He attended the United States Military Academy at West Point and graduated in 1975 with a Bachelor of Science degree. At the Academy, Austin was actively involved in sports, playing rugby and running track. In 1986, Austin furthered his education by earning a Master of Arts in Counselor Education from Auburn University's College of Education. In 1989, he obtained a Master of Business Administration in Business Management from Webster University. His military education is equally impressive, having completed the Infantry Officer Basic and Advanced Courses, the Army Command and General Staff College, and the Army War College. This extensive academic and military training laid a strong foundation for Austin's distinguished career, highlighting his commitment to excellence and lifelong learning. How did Lloyd J. Austin begin his military career? After graduating from West Point in June 1975, Austin was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the infantry. He then completed airborne and ranger schools before receiving his initial assignment in Germany with the 3rd Infantry Division, mechanized. In Germany, he served as a rifle platoon leader and became a scout platoon leader and company executive officer in the 1st Battalion, 7th Infantry. After completing his assignment and attending the Infantry Officer Advanced Course, General Austin was assigned to the 82nd Airborne Division at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. While there, he commanded the Combat Support Company of the 2nd Battalion, Airborne, 508th Infantry, and was the assistant S3 operations for the 1st Brigade. In 1981, General Austin was assigned to Indianapolis, Indiana, where he served as the Army Indianapolis District Recruiting Command Operations Officer. Later, he commanded a company in the Army Recruiting Battalion. Following this, General Austin pursued further studies at Auburn University, completing a master's in education. He then returned to West Point as a company tactical officer. After completing the U.S. Army Command and General Staff College at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, he was assigned to the prestigious 10th Mountain Division, Light Infantry, at Fort Drum, New York. During his time there, he served as the S3 Operations and later as the Executive Officer for the 2nd Battalion, 2nd Infantry. Following this assignment, he served as the Executive Officer for the 1st Brigade within the 10th Mountain Division. His outstanding performance led to his appointment as the Director of Plans, Training, Mobilization, and Security for Fort Drum. In 1993, General Austin demonstrated leadership skills and later served as G3 for the 82nd Airborne Division for a third tour of duty, where he assumed command of the 3rd Brigade. Shortly after assuming Brigade Command, he was appointed Chief of the Joint Operations Division, J3, on the Joint Staff at the Pentagon in Arlington, Virginia. In 2001, he was assigned as Assistant Division Commander for Maneuver of the 3rd Infantry Division at Fort Stewart, Georgia. In this role, he played a pivotal part in leading the division's invasion of Iraq in March 2003. Austin was actively involved in the combat operations, traveling 500 miles from Kuwait to Baghdad in his command and control vehicle. Under his leadership, the division successfully reached and secured Baghdad. For his exemplary actions and leadership during the invasion, Austin was awarded the Silver Star, the nation's third highest award for valor. How significant is Lloyd J. Austin's Silver Star Award? During the initial stages of the Iraq War, Brigadier General Lloyd Austin was critical in the 3rd Infantry Division's rapid advance from Kuwait to Baghdad. While serving as the Assistant Division Commander of Maneuver, Austin led with exemplary determination and strategic acumen, effectively deploying overwhelming firepower against Iraqi forces. 
His decisive leadership ultimately led to the resounding defeat of the opposing forces in battle, as documented in the recommendation for Austin's Silver Star Award, which was obtained through a Freedom of Information Act request by task and purpose. During numerous instances of facing indirect and direct fire, General Austin displayed exceptional bravery by consistently leading from the front in every crucial battle. His unwavering commitment ensured that combat resources were positioned strategically at the most pivotal moments of each conflict, as described in the award citation. The Silver Star is a distinguished military honor, ranking as the third highest award for exceptional valor. It is granted to service members who demonstrate remarkable courage and fearlessness, going above and beyond the call of duty while risking their lives. The first Black Secretary of Defense in America is among the few general officers awarded the Silver Star for their actions during the War on Terrorism. Task and Purpose has identified only two others who have received this honor, Army Major General Buford Blount and Army Brigadier General William Grimsley. During the Iraq invasion, General Blount, the commander of the 3rd Infantry Division, recommended Austin for the Silver Star. Brigade General Grimsley was awarded for his actions as a colonel leading the 1st Brigade, 3rd Infantry Division, in March and April 2003. Only now, limited public information has been available about how Austin earned his Silver Star, aside from what is included in the award citation. The recommendation for his award provides a more comprehensive understanding of Austin's actions in March and April 2003, which played a crucial role in enabling the 3rd Infantry Division to overwhelm the enemy swiftly. How the Defense Secretary Austin got the Silver Star During the historic U.S. invasion of Iraq in March 2003, military commanders anticipated minimal resistance as their troops advanced through the Shiite areas in southern Iraq, believing that the major confrontations would occur closer to Baghdad. However, their expectations were promptly shattered as American and coalition forces encountered fierce opposition from Iraqi troops and the formidable Fedayeen Saddam irregular forces. The capture of cities such as Najaf and Nasiriyah, south of Baghdad, turned into prolonged and intense battles marked by relentless and determined fighting. During the height of Iraqi resistance, the U.S. faced challenges in achieving its objectives. Then, Brigade General James Mattis, leading the 1st Marine Division, took unprecedented action by relieving a regimental commander during combat operations due to slow progress. General Lloyd J. Austin led the 3rd Infantry Division soldiers amidst enemy fire in this intense environment. His leadership during Operation Iraqi Freedom was pivotal. Described as the heartbeat of the division's attack from Kuwait to Baghdad in his Silver Star narrative, General Austin coordinated airstrikes, indirect fire, and ground maneuvers to break through Iraqi defensive lines. He was also credited with ensuring that soldiers had the necessary supporting fires during the intense ground combat at Najaf. After five intense days of combat, in which our forces displayed remarkable bravery and resilience, a significant number of enemy combatants have been neutralized, and numerous enemy vehicles lie scattered across the battlefield. Our division is now ready to launch an assault into Karbala, the report states. Austin skillfully directed many close air support missions and efficiently managed multiple units engaged in combat while coordinating numerous artillery barrages and missile strikes. Also, his exceptional ability to assess the enemy's movements, maintain awareness of our division's positions, and understand the terrain while providing clear and precise instructions was crucial to the division's success. Austin continued to exhibit exceptional leadership and coordination as the 3rd Infantry Division advanced northward. In addition, he recommended to his commanding general that the division aggressively advance into Baghdad, showcasing his strategic foresight and bold decision-making. Ultimately, Austin forced the Iraqis to fight a battle for which they were unprepared and destroyed them, saving the lives of countless soldiers while inflicting catastrophic damage on the Iraqi forces, according to the award citation. The award narrative highlights B.G. Austin's initiative, confidence, and tactical savvy, empowering commanders to lead without a doubt that the battlefield operating systems would be available and positioned correctly to overcome the enemy, as per documents obtained by task and purpose. Brigade General Blount submitted Austin for the Silver Star on April 18, 2003, and Lieutenant General William Wallace, who headed V Corps during the Iraq invasion, approved the award. Lloyd J. Austin became Army Vice Chief of Staff. 
In December 2011, General Lloyd J. Austin was nominated by President Obama to serve as the 33rd Vice Chief of Staff of the United States Army. He officially assumed the position on January 31, 2012. In his role as VCSA, General Austin was responsible for overseeing the day-to-day -day administration of the Army's budget and headquarters staff, playing a crucial role in shaping the direction of the Army's operations and priorities. One of his key initiatives was addressing the issue of suicides within the ranks. Under his leadership, the Army implemented measures aimed at reducing the incidence of suicide and enhancing mental health support for service members. Additionally, General Austin led the Army's efforts to raise awareness and enhance the treatment options for the invisible wounds of war, such as traumatic brain injuries and post-traumatic stress. His dedication to improving the well-being of soldiers and addressing the challenges faced by those returning from combat zones earned him widespread respect and recognition within the military community. Lloyd J. Austin was the United States Central Command. On March 22, 2013, General Austin assumed the position of Commander of the U.S. Central Command, CENTCOM, after being nominated by President Obama in late 2012. He succeeded General James Mattis and later followed in his footsteps as the Secretary of Defense. As the CENTCOM commander, General Austin oversaw all United States troops deployed and major military operations in the Middle East, Central Asia, and certain parts of South Asia. His command area included 20 countries, Iraq, Syria, Yemen, Afghanistan, Egypt, and Lebanon. Lloyd J. Austin was known in the private sector. Upon retiring as CENTCOM commander, the first black Secretary of Defense in America became a board member at Raytheon Technologies, a prominent military contractor, in April 2016. His significant financial involvement with Raytheon included stock holdings worth approximately $500,000 and total compensation, including stock, amounting to $2.7 million as of October 2020. Additionally, he took on a role as a director at Nucor on September 18, 2017. Later, on May 29, 2018, he was appointed as an independent director on the board of Tenet Healthcare. Austin also established a consulting firm and became a partner at Pine Island Capital, an investment company associated with Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Michelle Flournoy. Lloyd J. Austin as the Secretary of Defense. On December 7, 2020, it was reported that President-elect Joe Biden would nominate retired General Lloyd Austin as Secretary of Defense. Austin had a close relationship with Bo Biden, the late son of Joe Biden when Bo served on Austin's staff during his deployment to Iraq in 2008 and 2009. They maintained contact even after Bo returned from deployment, fostering a deep bond. Biden first became acquainted with Austin while Austin served as the U.S. Central Command Commander during the Obama administration. Biden, then Vice President, reportedly grew to trust Austin through the briefings and updates he provided, solidifying their professional relationship. General Lloyd J. Austin's nomination was notable for several reasons. Like former Defense Secretary James Mattis, Austin required a congressional waiver of the National Security Act 1947. This waiver bypassed the mandatory seven-year waiting period after leaving active duty military service as stipulated by 10 United States Constitution 113 of A. The need for a waiver sparked discussions in Congress about its potential impact on civil-military relations, reflecting concerns about maintaining civilian control over the military. Despite these concerns, Austin's nomination received significant support. Former Secretary of Defense Robert Gates and former Secretary of State Colin Powell, among others, issued statements endorsing Austin. Their support highlighted Austin's qualifications and the respect he commanded within military and political circles. The Senate Armed Services Committee held a confirmation hearing for Lloyd Austin on January 19, 2021. Austin addressed various concerns during the hearing and outlined his vision for the Department of Defense. On January 21st, Congress granted Austin a waiver of the seven-year requirement for former military personnel before they can be appointed as Secretary of Defense. The waiver passed with 326 votes in the House of Representatives and 69 votes in the Senate, reflecting bipartisan support for his nomination. Austin was confirmed by the Senate in 93 votes on January 22, 2021, 
with Republican Senators Josh Hawley and Mike Lee casting the only dissenting votes. Upon confirmation and swearing in later that day, Austin became the first Black Secretary of Defense. He officially took office on January 22, 2021, after being sworn in by a Defense Department official. Vice President Kamala Harris conducted a ceremonial swearing in on January 25, 2021. Sources indicate that President Joe Biden became familiar with Austin during briefings in the White House Situation Room, while Austin was leading U.S. Central Command during the Obama administration. Austin was the first black officer to lead CENTCOM, where he oversaw U.S. military operations in the Middle East. His responsibilities included developing and implementing a strategy to defeat the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, showcasing his strategic acumen and leadership capabilities. Austin's extensive military career and his role in pivotal operations, such as the campaign against ISIS, contributed to Biden's trust in his abilities. This trust, combined with Austin's historic nomination and subsequent confirmation, underscored the significance of his appointment in the broader context of U.S. military and civil military relations. Austin's love life and health battles. General Lloyd J. Austin and his wife, Charlene Denise Banner Austin, have had a loving marriage for over 40 years. Charlene made significant contributions as a nonprofit administrator and dedicated her time to serving on the Military Family Research Institute board at Purdue University. In addition to their commitment to their careers, Austin and Charlene have supported military families. Austin's family also includes two stepsons, demonstrating the depth of their family bonds. On January 1, 2024, General Austin was admitted to Walter Reed National Military Medical Center after experiencing complications from a minimally invasive surgical procedure performed on December 22, 2023, to treat his prostate cancer. Following the surgery, General Austin began exhibiting symptoms such as fever, chills, and shallow breathing on January 2, prompting the medical staff to transfer him to the critical care unit for more intensive monitoring and collaborative care by his medical team. Austin spent several days in the intensive care unit at Walter Reed. During this period, he delegated his authority to the Deputy Secretary of Defense, Kathleen Hicks. On January 5, after his time in the hospital, he resumed his duties as Secretary of Defense. It is worth noting that his doctors have stated that his cancer was treated early, and his prognosis is reported to be excellent. Lloyd J. Austin's Barrier-Breaking Career the Senate Armed Services Committee held a confirmation hearing for Lloyd Austin on January 19, 2021. During this session, Austin addressed various concerns, including his approach to maintaining civilian control over the military and his vision for the Department of Defense. He emphasized his commitment to upholding democratic principles and ensuring the military's readiness to address current and future threats. On January 21, Congress granted Austin a waiver of the National Security Act 1947 seven-year requirement for former military personnel before they can be appointed Secretary of Defense. This waiver was necessary because Austin had retired from the military only four years prior. The waiver passed with a significant majority, reflecting bipartisan support in the House of Representatives and the Senate. Upon confirmation and immediate swearing in by a Defense Department official, Austin made history as the first Black Secretary of Defense. A formal ceremonial swearing-in occurred on January 25, 2021, officiated by Vice President Kamala Harris. Austin oversaw U.S. military operations in the Middle East. He was the first Black officer to lead CENTCOM, a role in which he demonstrated his strategic expertise and leadership. One of his significant achievements was formulating and executing a plan to combat the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria (ISIS) which showcased his ability to handle complex and high-stakes military operations. Austin's extensive military career, highlighted by his leadership during critical operations such as the fight against ISIS, contributed to Biden's trust in his capabilities. This trust, along with Austin's historic nomination and confirmation, marked a significant moment in U.S. military history, emphasizing the evolving dynamics of civil-military relations and the importance of diverse leadership at the highest levels of the Department of Defense. Lloyd J. Austin, rarely in the spotlight. The retired general praised Austin as an extraordinary leader. 
Despite being less visible at press conferences and think tank events than other generals, Austin's leadership was highly regarded. He wasn't frequently mentioned in newspaper op-eds or professional journals and had rarely been in the spotlight. In an op-ed for The Atlantic, President Biden emphasized the importance of the next Secretary of Defense's role in orchestrating a massive logistics operation for distributing COVID-19 vaccines. He highlighted Austin's experience overseeing the Army's largest logistical operation in six decades during the Iraq drawdown, indicating his ability to handle such significant tasks. In a rare interview with talk show host Roland Martin back in March 2020, just as the pandemic was taking hold, Lloyd Austin discussed the military's role in assisting with the COVID-19 response. He highlighted the logistical support and resources the military could provide, such as distributing medical supplies and setting up field hospitals to aid overwhelmed healthcare systems. Despite this, it needs to be clarified what Austin's priorities as Secretary of Defense would be. The next Defense Secretary will face a range of challenging issues. One of the most debated topics is the future of U.S. military presence in Afghanistan. Some analysts advocate for a complete withdrawal of U.S. troops. At the same time, President Biden supports maintaining a contingent of several thousand troops to apply pressure on militant groups like Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State. Austin has not publicly expressed his views on this matter. The first black Secretary of Defense in America's military career has predominantly focused on the Middle East, particularly during his tenure as U.S. Central Command Commander. This has raised concerns about his experience with U.S. rivals in other regions, such as Russia and China. While his expertise in Middle Eastern affairs is well regarded, navigating the strategic challenges these other global powers pose will be a critical aspect of his role. To become Secretary of Defense, Austin required a waiver from Congress because he had yet to be out of uniform for the required seven years. Historically, Congress has granted such a waiver only twice, once in the 1950s for George Marshall and more recently, in 2017, for James Mattis. Democratic Senator Jack Reed of Rhode Island, who had supported the waiver for Mattis, expressed reservations about doing so again. At the time of the Mattis waiver, Reed stated, Waiving the law should happen no more than once in a generation. Therefore, I will not support a waiver for future nominees. However, on Tuesday, Reed signaled openness to a waiver for Austin. I will carefully review this nomination and look forward to meeting with General Austin to hear his views on the national security challenges we face and the exemption request being made in order for him to be considered to lead the Pentagon, he said in a statement. In his Atlantic op-ed, President Biden anticipated concerns like Reid's earlier one, writing, I hope that Congress will grant a waiver to Secretary-designate Austin, just as Congress did for Secretary Jim Mattis. Given our nation's immense and urgent threats and challenges, he should be confirmed swiftly. U.S. Senator Tim Kaney, Diva, said, Regarding the legal barrier for this nomination, I intend to closely evaluate the implications for waiving the National Security Act requirement twice in just four years. There is also a growing number of voices among lawmakers and defense analysts who oppose having another retired general run the Pentagon, arguing that it could be detrimental to civilian military relations. They believe the Pentagon should be led by a civilian, not a recently retired officer. After retiring four years ago, Austin opened a consulting firm. He joined the board of directors of Raytheon Technologies, which raises concerns about the potential influence of defense contractors on Pentagon decisions. The first black secretary of defense in America remains one of the few black leaders in history. Although in the upper echelons of the military, there is a noticeable underrepresentation of African-American leaders. Yet out of the 41 highest ranking military officials, General Lloyd J. Austin III remains an esteemed figure. However, do you think General Lloyd Journey can be counted as black struggling more to succeed? Drop a comment, like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more inspiring awareness of black success and struggles. Thanks for watching.